Marjean, we're standing in front of a lovely dresser here. Can you tell me a bit about it? Uh, that dresser was built in, uh, I think, about 1988 or 89. Myself and my father, we, we built eight or nine of them, I think, all together. But this was the last one we built together. He died in 93. So when he'd go to a sawmill or somewhere, he'd see a piece of timber and he'd pick it up and he said that'll do for such and such a thing in the dresser and after a while he'd have enough and uh, that's how he started making them and then people saw them and especially my sisters I had six sisters and they all wanted a dresser so that's the way the world I suppose but he he, he was a good man at his job yeah the dresser outlasted him anyway yeah that's it. This a lot of different timber in this dresser. This, this would be a teak, and this is cedar. Cedar here around the door. We bits of cedar here and pine. And I don't know what else. Uh, the captain is red deal. Uh, what is it? Uh, and even it was done in a bit of a hurry and not much uh, attention to detail, maybe, but. That's the way we were, that's the way we work, you know, get the job done. Yeah. And what was your father's name? Jimmy. Jimmy Mellet, or we used to call him Jimmy Nan after his mother. That's, I come from Connemara. That's the way they name people down there, they name them after the father or the mother, but uh, he was Jimmy Nan after his mother because his father was away in, in America for 19 years. So. Yeah. And you were born in Connemara? Born in Connemara, yes. Yes, the first of our family, the first three were born in England, they were in England and the war broke out and they, they wouldn't take the kids off and bring them out of the country so they came home, that's how, and uh, that's in the thirties, so I am the second youngest of, there was eleven, yeah, and uh, there's eight now, I think it's eight that's left, is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. five and three, yeah. One thing that's striking is the design, the little features in this dresser, I can spot the West of Ireland and some of them like at the feet and the shoulder there. Yeah. The designs, who, who designed this dresser? My father designed it, yeah. He designed them all. They had to be five foot wide for the six plates. That was a must with him. And those here, when the brown bread was baked, there'd be five or six cakes of brown bread there. When they be eight or nine in the house, they wouldn't last too long. Yeah, yeah. We were hungry when we were youngsters. Yeah. And he was born and bred in Connemara as well. Yeah, born in Connemara. Yeah, yeah. But he he worked on the Shannon, and he worked with German engineers, and I think he picked up a bit of the trade with them and people who work in Northern the crash when that was built. He, I don't know how long he was down there now, but he used to talk about and he used to speak German words. Too, and he'd be giving out to us. He'd, yeah, he'd, he'd have a few German words for us. Yeah, yeah. And was that the first dresser he made? No, no. This would be the last of about eight that we that he made that I saw him making. But he he made them in Connemara before he left. We came here in fifty six. He, he himself and a fellow by the name of Mike Gibbons uh, made it. Even the Chardons they used to make. There was nothing they couldn't do, yeah. And very primitive tools, but good tradesmen, yeah. And uh, so we had a churn here that he made in Connemara. They dug the timber up in the bog, the oak, and they cut it. And they made the churn and many a pound of butter had made. But, of course, time went by and it was left outside and it all fell apart. It was an awful pity, but that's the way. <coughs> that's... Then people got interested in the old stuff again, and that's when he started making these dressers. Yeah. But he was making them back in the probably would have been the sixties or. Oh, uh, but he he made them in the forties, in Connemara, but not in the sixties. I'd say it was maybe late seventies when he started making them here. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say late seventies. My sisters, a lot of them have what, these type of dressers. That's, one in Tipperary and one in Mullingar and one in Kildare here and sister up the road has one and, and he, 
wouldn't take him too long. He was. Yeah. And he made the dressers you're talking about for your for wedding presents. Is that right? Yeah, more or less for wedding presents for uh, for his daughters. Yeah. Um, I made. Uh, I'd have made about four since he died. But the last one I made was year before last. I made it for my daughter who got married, which is around the corner there at the minute because she's fixing up her house, you know. So she's putting, I tell her, she had to put an extension on the house for the dresser. So that's where we tell her, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so Jimmy made dressers in Connemara, and then when he came to me, he made dressers for his own daughters. Yes. And the dressers that he made for his own daughters, are they surviving? Oh yes, they're all surviving, yeah. Yeah, they're in different places, they'll still have them, yeah. Are they similar to these, Martin? Similar, very similar, yeah. The, the doors it would have been different. The, the doors would be outside on the frame on some, on some of them, you know. I put the doors on that and I said I thought I'd change a little bit and let them into the frame, but yeah, that's the way. And did he stick by that rule, the six plate rule? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it had to be five foot across, minimum five feet across or else it wasn't a dresser according to him. Yeah, that, that was, that was the Bible with him, the, the five foot, had to be five foot across, yeah. He wouldn't, he wouldn't make it otherwise. Oh. And did you ever see any of his dressers out in Connemara? In oh I did, yeah, uh, I did see a couple of them, yeah. We had, we had a dresser that he, I, I don't know, he make it or fix it up when we came up here, but of course, it was left out as well and of course there'd be much more design in the sides of it here and across the top and probably had more time to be, at, be added at it. that's why the lovely design and when they take bits of the timber out with the chisel and that yeah but, uh, i didn't do that no i wouldn't have the patience no i would not no. and where did he make him eh? no, a shed out there yeah I have a garage out there and I have a few tools out there, not too many, but I make different things when the time comes. Somebody wants something, if they talk to me or design it, I'd, I'd make it for them, you know. I know, so you didn't put any, any drawers in this one, is that deliberate? Yes, because I was told that the drawers are always full of trash, so that's the idea, no, no drawers, yeah. yeah. And the one I made for my daughter, no drawers in it either, but... I made ones with drawers in them, I did, yeah. Yeah, if people want them, if I make them for somebody in particular, I'd put drawers in it if they want them, yeah. So here you are in County Mead making dressers in the Conmara's thing. Conmara dressers, yeah. yeah. And you've got the lovely little, the little, the little, you had a great name on them, what was it, the, the, the kippeen on the little lats? Oh, these here, the kippeen, uh, for holding the plates, yeah. What did you call them again? A Kipping the Blotty. That's what my father used to call them. I don't know, I'm sure they have they have a name, but that's what he'd call them. And as you see, they're just held in by two pieces of timber both in, so that you just lift them up and they come out. Yeah. And I noticed the one up here is fixed, is it? Yeah, but it, if you pull that out in the middle, it pulls out the side, you can still take it out, yeah. yeah. It bends that, that little bit, yeah. That. This, I think that's pine. Yeah, that's a bit of pine that's in that. Yeah. This one, it turns around. This one doesn't, because it's a different setup. Yeah. Yeah. And tell me, how many dressers have you made? I've made four so far. But I, I've been in order now to make a couple more anyway, if, if it happens. Getting the time to do it is. And there's one you've made inside of here for your own daughter's wedding. Yeah, yeah. And who, the other three, were, who did you make them for? Uh, for neighbours. Yeah. yeah, I made one for, uh, they have a sale of work in the school there to collect money and I made one for them one time it was sold for 300. Yeah. Or I think, or I got 300 and probably sold for maybe 450 or something. I forget now, it was so long ago. They're absolutely gorgeous, and you uh, kept it. You kept the little the feet in it. Oh yeah, well that was that was the way 
my father had them designed and I asked him about those feet and they were for the balance because in case the kids would be climbing up and that pulled them down. So when the, you have the feet sticking out, it gives it a better balance, harder to, to move it. But and uh, I put carpet on the feet of that and it leaves it easier to slide around the place, you know. Not, yeah. not too easy to move, but now I'd say it's there in a while. Yeah. The, the, last thing, the last thing I ask you, are there any things on, to, on that dresser there now that belong to your mother or your wife's people or anything like that there? To bring oh, back? I, I, those jugs at the top, I'm sure that they weren't now. The jug with the, with the, the bird on it. Yes, yeah, this one yeah. here. Yeah. That was, my mother gave it to me and it belonged to her mother. So that's very that would have kept from, yeah, yeah. Kept from yeah. and, there, over there's, here. and there's a little your mother gave gave that to Nora, Nora our, our, yeah, daughter. our daughter yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, and some of the rest are uh, this, these fishes were wedding presents and, yeah, and, this, and the, the, the willow was a present as well yeah, and this, this plate here is yeah. Uh, that was the commemoration when the people in Rathcarn were 70 years or 50 years or something it's the yeah. they brought yeah. out those uh, they brought out the plate, the, commemorative these plate, plates com commemorative yeah. plates yeah. and it's supposed to be a man on a bike because when the people were moving up from Connemara before the, the uh, when the scheme started that so many people went on a cycle in 1934 up to Dáil to uh, talk to the, the so politicians. Me to get the, the yeah, change up yeah, to the, yeah. the good land here. And my father was one of those who cycled, but by the time uh, things had come to pass that they were moving them up Connemara, he had gone to England. And I suppose only for the war, we'd be all cockneys now. We'd be speaking with an English accent, mm -hmm. but yeah, he worked on Waterloo Bridge, and he, while he was over there, and he was he was uh, a ganger man on Waterloo Bridge by the time the war broke out. But he had to come home. They wouldn't they weren't prepared to give the to give up the kids to someone else because they were after losing a child to whoop and cough. Uh, he he'd been the third, and he was a it was a boy. Thomas was his name, and he was nine months. He died anyway. He's in a place called Wimbledon, where he'd were not too far away from the tennis. So it wasn't easy for them to leave England after losing a child, and you know. But they were good people, great people. Yeah, taught us well, and prepared us for life well. I think. <laughs>